<laughs> oh, oh, good. Hello. Oh, good gosh, golly, God. Oh, it's been a while, hasn't it? Oh, I, 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 I hope you've been well because I. Oh, I, I, I've been great. Oh man, I've been up. To, I've been up to so, so much. Uh, I, I got a lot of paperwork done, but. I, I still can't really make a good origami crane. Uh, oh, I, I, I tried to become an inventor for a little bit. You know, I, I figured if someone could invent something like bread, then, you know, I, I could make something up. Best I could come up with, though, was something I called the reverse screwdriver, which everyone was just trying to tell me is a screwdriver. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> and a, a buddy of mine down in the new tropics got me really into breathing oxygen. <laughs> oh, 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 let, let me tell you, there is nothing like breathing oxygen. It, it, it gives you a kick like nothing else can. Oh, wait, but don't don't just hop oxygen, uh, kids. Because you know, as mayor, oh, I I have to make sure that I I, I set a good example for the youngins. I, I, I'm telling you, we did lots of things. Many great super duper things to improve the lives of everyone in Harness Land. A ton of incredible, edible, edible things. Uh, the day after tomorrow became real life here for about a week. <coughs> so that was annoying. Uh, oh, uh, we had our own little Godzilla hatch over in Hamiltonian Fields. And it's out where we experiment with our playground-friendly pesticides. Uh, so that was cool. Uh, yeah, no, nothing else really going on. So, uh, all right. Uh, it was great catching up with all of you. Uh, I best be going back to doing mayoral things, like making sure I don't spend all of the town's money on military-grade whoopee cushions. Because, you know, we have a big stake season coming up in harness racing. So uh, I, I got a lot of work to do. Uh, we'll, we'll talk soon, okay? All right, that sounds good. Eh, I'm just teasing ya. I think I took too strong a hit of oxygen. And eh, nonsense. Your eyes see better than your brain anyway. I just came over to formally introduce myself. I'm the head man of Thoroughbredville. I... am the mayor of... Thoroughbredville? President. President. President of Thoroughbredville. We applied to become a country recently, and we're just granted our sovereignty. <laughs> Turns out, it's all about the money you have. So, I just decided to take the liberty to try and help Thoroughbredville expand a touch. And so I came over here to... Ah! You'll want to open this. It says that by eminent domain, Harness Land is now in the hands of Thoroughbredville. This is just a blank page. Hey, you get the gist. <laughs> anyway, we're going to have a massive Kentucky Derby this year. So we felt it necessary to expand. It's our biggest race in Thoroughbredville, after all. Oh. Don't, don't tell me you're going to tear down Harness Land so you can try and fit all 20 of those horses in that starting gate. What? No. Churchill Downs is already big enough for that. 
we're not going to tear down Harness Land. You're just under our control now. And so, I wanted to stop by and say, hello, how are you? And clearly, since you're well, I'll just see myself out. Don't forget to pay your taxes. Oh, more taxes? Oh. <laughs> Man, Kentucky Derby this, Kentucky Derby that. Nobody ever asks about my feelings. It's a dumb race that doesn't make any sense anyway. All those thoroughbred villains making their horses run a mile and a quarter. And even distances less than a mile. Now, everyone knows that the proper horse racing distance is one mile. And anyone who says otherwise is the devil! Man. Man, horse racing stake season was just about to get underway, too. None of this makes any sense. Why does Thoroughbredville have to run Harness Land? And who thought putting 20 horses into one starting gate was a good idea? And why is the guy on the back of the horse when he should be behind the horse sitting in a cart? You can't steer a horse on the back. Good luck driving a car like that. <laughs> You can't oversee Harness Land. Hey, look, I'm the mayor, but I do bum diddly squat about anything. Sometimes the sheriff will let me handcuff a guy to a tree, but that doesn't mean anything. <coughs> I've got to get to the bottom of this. There must be some kind of malfeasance or bad intent or embezzling going on here. Especially if I'm the president. Wait, but don't, don't think I'm admitting to anything by saying that. No. I think I'm gonna have to go somewhere where I never thought I'd wanna go. I'm gonna have to go. <sighs> to Thoroughbredville. <coughs> Oh, no dumping. Well... Oh, oh, that's blood. Uh, that, that's not good. Oh, no, wait. Oh, I drank some blood earlier. Okay, <laughs> I'm fine. So this is the president's mansion. Looks a little too quaint for someone called a president. Cuisines are in season? Oh, yuck. Okay. 
Let's see what kind of hijinks the president's up to up there. Oh, you like to sip on beverages now, don't you? Disgusting. Oh, and with that shed over there? Oh, I, I bet that's where you store all the jockeys. Yeah, you probably just stack them on top of each other in there. Don't even give them a home. But, oh, oh God, he's moving. Mr. Mayor? Oh, <laughs> you're not gonna believe this. I lost my wallet. And it, it, it was, it was in the bush the whole time. Oh, this is, this is so crazy. I'll, I'll, I'll be on my way then. It, isn't that, wow, that's incredible. It was right in the bush. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> nice to see the boys hard at work up there. Our hard, hard work here in Harness Land. History is paved by people whose backs are against the wall. Yeah. The Romans, when they had to cross the Rubicon, uh, Albert Einstein, when he was learning the alphabet, and then you know, looking back to like the American Revolution, when Benedict Cumberbatch decided that he wanted to be British and not American. American Revolution. Today, I am asking all constituents of Harness Land to please text the number on screen now where we have the number active. Please vote. Would you like to declare yourselves a sovereign nation? Vote now on your phones. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you guys are voting. <laughs> well, the vote's in, it's settled. We have some writing to do. We declare ourselves independent from the colonies of Thoroughbredville. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one be Mr. Mayor, this is just the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, I just thought it said what I was trying to say better. And Mr. Mayor, you know that this is a 300-year-old document. It doesn't hold any bearing in today's world. Come on, this is what all my people voted for. If your blank sheet of paper works, this should be okay. And so, I'll bid you a good day, Mr. Mayor. <sighs> oh, man. How the hell did that American Revolution stuff work for them? I mean, I guess they did fight a big war about it. And I could go and fight a big war about this, but... And I'd have to mobilize the Harness Land Army. And before that, I'd have to find the Harness Land Army.
you know, the thoroughbred people don't understand a lot about us harness people. They don't understand the toil that we have to live through day in, day out. And they think they can come here and walk all over us and act like they understand? There's no possible way they can understand. We are two breeds divided by the same animal. <clears throat> There's a reason why I'm the mayor of Harness Land. There's a reason why I've been entrusted by my people to make sure that their best interests are preserved. There's a reason why in the history of Harness Land it has never been overseen by anyone of the other breed. And so that's why I think today I have to take these matters to a much more drastic measure. And kids, I don't condone doing this by any metric, but I think to save my people of Harness Land, I'm gonna have to assassinate the president of Thorough Thoroughbred. Bill. Uh, it sounds it sounds so harsh when I write it like that. I mean, can I should, should I can I write it a different way? Or uh, I don't know. That does make for a compelling manifesto. Nobody trying to assassinate me. No. Beautiful country out here, ain't it? Uh, yeah, it looks nice. Could you please take that hat oh, off? Oh, yeah, sorry. Thank you. Now. Can you please tell me what all this hubbub is about? I don't, I don't understand why Thoroughbredville has to run Harness Land, or why I'm somehow the president also of Thoroughbredville. And then I don't, the Kentucky Derby as a race doesn't make any sense. How are you gonna put all those horses that are barely old enough to go eight miles into one race? I, I, I just, I don't, I don't understand at all. The Kentucky Derby is as much a historical event as it is a metaphor for the very foundational principles that built America. You see, it certainly has its heritage, and we do want to celebrate that. However, heritage isn't built in a day, in a week, in a year. It's built through lifetimes, lifetimes upon lifetimes. And those are lives that have been given and gone. So in a way, in honoring tradition, we're able to provide value to all those lives that served. So it's less about who's winning the race this year, who's running in the race. It's about the race being there. And it's about country of Thoroughbredville, making sure that that race will still be there by whatever means necessary.
you might not understand it in the same way that, quite frankly, I don't really understand what the hell you are. But I still respect you. And that's really all you can do. See, I'm here right now because of choices you made. You are the mayor of Harness Land because the choices you made set you down a path. And that path is what made you the person you are. Similarly, had you made a couple different choices, well, you might be running your own country right now. That's not to say that life's on a predetermined path. Instead, you have every piece of agency to the choices you make. But it's up to you, as a person, to decide if that choice is right at all. And there is where you find who you are and what you are, whatever the hell that is. Now look, I think you'll come to learn that being owned ain't half bad. I mean, just look at the horses. They get fed, they're housed, they get cleaned. What more could you possibly need? I really think you'll come to find that being owned ain't as bad as it seems. Have yourself a nice Kentucky Derby. And don't forget to pray the rosary. Pray the rosary? I thought it was called the run for the roses. I know what I said. Oh, and one more thing. I know what you did back there last year. That body, she left there in the grass. That's all I wanted to say. Toodaloo.